Hello everybody, in this video I'm going to be giving you a little supplemental instruction for completing uh, this week's lab report. It's called Buffer Solutions by LabFlow. The first thing that you're going to do is you're going to go through and it's got like a picture of like a little handheld pH meter with a reading on it and you're just going to record that. Once you pass that, you're going to get into the bulk of the report here. The first thing we have is a table that describes how we've made our buffer solutions. Uh, you're going to notice that we have beaker 1, and beaker 1 only contains acid, so we have not created a buffer yet. And we have beaker 6 that's only going to contain the conjugate salt, conjugate acid of uh, the acid, which is acetic acid. Our conjugate base is sodium uh, acetate. Uh, so this isn't a buffer either. The other thing that we'll notice here is that we've cleverly made it so that the final volume is always going to be 30 mils. So 24 plus 6 is 30, 18 plus 12, 12 plus 18, 6 plus 24. So we're always going to have the final, the same final volume in these solutions. Beakers 2 through 5 are going to be buffers with an acid and its conjugate base and beaker 1 is going to be just the acid, whereas beaker 6 is just going to be the conjugate base. After that, we get into a couple of tables here, and this is the data that you actually filled out uh, when you were filling at the beginning with the little handheld pH meter. Um, basically what's happening is we have the initial pH of each of the solutions, they are the same solutions in these two tables. The initial pH is a little different, but that's just within the realm of like an error from the measuring. Uh, after that, we have the pH after the addition of one mil of acid, two mils of acid, three mils of acid, and then one mil of base, two mils of base, and three mils of base. We're gonna use these to determine the buffering capacity uh, of these various solutions. Um, but First, what we're going to do is we're going to calculate the initial concentration of the acid and the conjugate base in each of these solutions. And we're going to base that off the fact that they are half molar solutions, 0 0.05 molar solutions, and we have their volumes. Because we made the clever choice to uh, have a final volume that's going to be the same for all the solutions, this actually becomes fairly easy. We're just going to take the volume of acid or the volume of the salt that were, was added and we're going to do that in milliliters so that these units cancel. The denominator is always going to be 30 milliliters and we're going to multiply that by the concentration. So this is just a basic dilution equation here and we'll find the initial concentration of the acetic acid and the initial concentration of its conjugate base. After that, we uh, come here where what we are looking to do is compare the measured pH for each of these solutions to the theoretical calculated base or a pH. So there are three cases here. We have beaker one where we just have acid, beaker six where we just have the conjugate base, and then beakers two through five where we have a buffered solution. In the initial case for beaker 1, in order to find the pH of that solution, we're going to solve the typical equilibrium problem that we did uh, a lot of last week. So this is going to be our equation. We have acetic acid. It dissociates into ions, the acetate ion and the hydronium ion right here, or hydrogen ion, however you want to call it. Uh, and then we set out an ice table. So we have the initial concentration that we just calculated above here, right there. And initially there's no dissociation. We can imagine that there's zero uh, molarity of the hydrogen ions, zero molarity of the acetate ions. 
then the change occurs. We're going to, for every one of these that we consume, we're going to produce one of these and one of these. So at equilibrium, we get these various different expressions. The Ka is going to be the products over the reactants. So we plug in those concentration values. We look at our ice table here. We see that we get x times x, or x squared, in the numerator. And we get the initial concentration minus x in the denominator. And after that, we're going to make a convenient approximation. We're going to assume that this x is very small in comparison to the initial concentration which is fairly valid for any weak acid. So we're going to go ahead and do that. We're going to say it approximately equals this expression right here. After that, we need to know what the Ka is for acetic acid, but that is a well-known quantity. It is spelled out in the laboratory PDF. And it is 1.8 times 10 to the negative 5. Solving this expression for x, we get that x is equal to the square root of that initial concentration times its Ka. x here is also equal to the hydrogen ion concentration. That was clear from our ice table here, where the hydrogen ion concentration is x at equilibrium. From here, we just have to calculate the pH. The pH is always going to be the negative log of the hydrogen ion concentration, or the negative log of x. Next, we need to be able to handle the buffer solutions in beakers 2 through 5 we're going to use the Henderson-Hasselbalch equation. The pKa is going to be the negative log of the Ka, or 4.74. And the log of the basic form to the acidic form is going to be the log of the sodium acetate to the acetic acid. And we're going to plug in those initial values here and be able to calculate the pH for each of those beakers. For the final beaker, beaker 6, we are now just dealing with a conjugate base. The first thing I like to do when I'm switching from acid to base is to calculate Kb over Ka. Uh, and so we have this relationship where Kb times Ka is equal to Kw. So Kb is Kw divided by Ka. Kw is always the same value, 1 times 10 to the negative 14th. We're going to divide it by that Ka value. You can see the Kb for this reaction is 5 times 10 to the negative 10. What we're describing with this equilibrium here is this reaction right here, where I've added the conjugate base. It reacts with liquid water to produce acetic acid and the hydroxide ion. We go back through our ice table that looks very much like the table that we just made. We have our initial concentration of the conjugate base, 0, 0 for the uh, products here. We're going to consume, for every one of these that we consume, we're going to produce one of each of these. So the equilibrium is the initial concentration minus the change, and then the change is for each one of those. So those are our x's. Writing out the Kb, we again have the products over the reactants. It comes to x squared over the initial concentration of acetate minus x. We can make that approximation again, that x is much is very, very small in, a pro in comparison to the initial concentration of acetate. And we say that that is equal to Kb. We solve for x here. We recognize that that is the concentration of hydroxide. We can now calculate the pOH as the negative log of that hydroxide ion concentration, or the negative log of x. And then we can get pH from pOH by taking 14 minus the pOH. At this point, we'll be able to fill in all of our calculated pHs. 
and then we can do the delta pH. So that's going to be this pH minus this pH. We're going to fill that value in here. Uh, as it notes right here, we are not going to include any negative signs, so we're going to take the absolute value of these uh, differences here. After that, we need to figure out the buffering capacity. Our criteria for this is that uh, how much of the acid or base can we add before more than it, it, the pH varies by uh, more than one pH unit. So if I'm looking at beaker one, I have 2.68. So I'm going to say that the buffering capacity of the acid would make would mean that this would have to fall below 1.68. After the addition of one mil, it's almost there, but it's not quite, it's at 1.69. So we're going to say that it buffered at one, it buffered one mil. Once we add two mils though, we're below that criteria, we're below that 1.68. So we can only claim that it has buffered one mil. So we're gonna say that that's one mil of acid. In this case, I have 4.2. I'm going to say that it's gonna buffer if it can keep it above 3.2 can see that even after one mil it was not able to do that uh, therefore its buffer uh, ability is going to be zero milliliters in this case here we're looking at base so but we have the same criteria so we have 2.78 I'm going to say that it's going to buffer if it can keep it below 3.78 once I added one mil it already has exceeded that, so it's going to have a zero milliliter buffering capacity. In this case, it has to keep it below 5.1. At one mil, it has done that. At two mils, it has done that. At three mils, it has failed. So the buffering capacity for this is going to be two milliliters of base. After that, we're going to see if we can describe any patterns observed between the buffering capacity and the concentration of the acid or base in each of the buffer solutions. Uh, see if there's any conclusions you can draw from that, and then you'll upload your work and your notebook pages. Uh, that's pretty much it. Um, as always, if you have any questions, please feel free to reach out to me.